Hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. Been, been good. Good to see you, brother. It's been a while. Yes, sir. Are you in uh, New York right now? or? Yeah, I'm in New York. Uh, I was just in uh, Newport a little bit before in San Fran. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, it was fun, man. How about yourself, I was... man? Oh, I'm in L.A. right now, but I was in um, San Fran like two weeks ago um, and then was uh yeah just got back killing where, where were you playing up there i was at uh i was playing with john john batiste and then oh, i shit. did the uh los armstrong um tribute show to uh it was like a armstrong now project with me oh, sweet. east hill and bruce harris it was crazy like you know oh nice man that's yeah so yes sir man yeah, Thanks it's for having good. me on. Yeah, but it's good to have you here, man. I, I think it's cool, you know, to kind of like, you know, uh, have this conversation on here since the last time. Because I think the last time I saw you, you know, I mean, was in New York probably sometime, but yeah. really was Oberlin, you know? And uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I might have caught you briefly at Newport last year. Right. That's right. But, yeah. but only for like a couple minutes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's you been, probably, been too you long. You played last year. Right. Yeah, I played last year. Yeah. Yeah. But not this year. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. You were playing with who? With um Yusef Days. That's drummer. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You've yeah, been playing awesome. with him a lot recently, right? Yeah, I've been uh I've been with him on on uh for the past year pretty much, but um going back out to London uh in two weeks because his um his album's coming out, so we're doing like a UK tour, and then um yeah, a couple more dates with him this year, but. It's been super fun. It's like a good, it's like a lot of freedom with the band. And sometimes we'll write songs like at soundcheck that then we'll, we'll play at the show. And it's, hmm. it's, it's loose, looser than, than a lot of groups I've played with, which is nice. So. That's killer. That way, like you get to like, I mean, it's nothing wrong with playing the same material every gig, but yeah, at least things stay, you know, fresh. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Man, it's cool because you know you're you're doing your thing now, man. You're in LA, right? You're in LA, and mm -hmm. you know it's yeah, like yeah. you're really pushing things, and it's great to see. You know, you know, um, also you know being someone that like I've kind of seen where you started, you know, and like being at Oberlin, and mm -hmm. you know, I feel like Oberlin kind of like has generated like some of the best out here, man. Like Sullivan Fortner. Oh yeah, like, you know it's like Theo Crooker is out here. Yeah, um, Casa. Uh, Asa, you know, yourself, like we're all like um, Michael, Michael Day. Day. So it's like Orange these themes yeah. come up all the time and it's like, oh, all these guys come from Oakland. But it's like, what's what was that process for you in finding like where, you know, you you you, you want to be inside in this whole kind of like music uh, industry and like kind of carving your, your, your way? Because obviously I find like, the hardest thing to do is to know what you want to do, you know, coming out of college and then to be like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, focus on that and, and, and find active ways to, you know, see myself throughout, you know, um, yeah. achieving that goal. Like, so can you explain to me like, yeah, a little bit about that process and, you know, how that came together? Yeah. Um, well, I think like at Oberlin, it was like amazing to study with with Sullivan for one semester and Dan. And I think like some of the best things about because I was thinking about going to school in New York as well, like it was deciding between NYU or, or Oberlin. Um, and I think like it was nice in some ways that there wasn't that many distractions there. So it was basically just like two options. Like, am I going to go practice, hang out with my friend or like get like food? And then even if you want to get food, it's like three choices. Where in New York, it's like you could get like any type of food with any person at any time. And it's like, oh, my God, like, what do I want to do? So um, I think like in some ways that like the simplicity there was was nice. And maybe like the whole time I was at Oberlin, I didn't think about music business or branding or any of that stuff. I didn't have like Instagram. I didn't I wasn't I was really just like playing piano and focus on like writing and playing with people and I I did my concept of the outside world I think was a little bit like 
I didn't like, I didn't know what, what New York was going to be like yet. So I was kind of like for, for it's bad and good, but like, you know, kind of in this bubble of Oberlin, whereas like, but like, it felt safe to like practice and experiment. Whereas like, if I had rushed straight into a city, then maybe like I would have tried to like get the professional stuff going too soon before I had time to kind of like experiment more and like find a, a sound. Um, mm -hmm. But, but yeah, like, so I, I moved to New York right after, um right after Oberlin and um, I lived in like a recording studio with three friends from there. Um, and I, yeah, like I would, I would go to, I was going to smalls and stuff when I first moved out there. I think you, you were there at that time too. I think it yeah, yeah, I caught you a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and like, like that was kind of the end of like Roy was there when I was first going there. I got to play with him like once or twice um, and like had some amazing nights when like I would, I, cause I, I lived in Brooklyn. So I'd always watch the live stream and would see like, Oh, Solomon's there. Like, let me hop on the, let me hop on the train. <laughs> and, I like, did that too. <laughs> yeah. And like, that was like, yeah, a lot of good memories with that. And then I, I kind of, but some, some, I guess some aspects of, of that scene, like later on, uh, I I sort of more started doing some like underground hip hop stuff as well and sort of meeting other artists and, and producing for people and kind of being in that world as well. Um, and uh, but yeah, I think I was like, uh, I mean, the whole time I was in New York, I I was doing a lot of like sideman gigs and stuff like playing with with different like pop singers and stuff and the um which was really fun. But then I don't think I had, I didn't have like a really a clear vision exactly for what I wanted to, what I wanted to do. And I wasn't like, I wasn't booking studio time for my band or, or taking like initiative really in a lot of ways. Um, and so I think actually weirdly enough, like <clears throat> the pandemic was a time, well, basically I got to a point in New York where like, cause I was living up there up until COVID um, where I was just kind of like, I was doing so much. I was hustling so much, but not really didn't have like a, a star or didn't have like a, a, a clear direction, I guess. And so then when and like I didn't put out any music in 2019. Let me let me turn these uh, notifications off. Um, but um, uh, so then like when when COVID hit, it was kind of like, OK, all gigs are canceled. And then I was like, all right, let me like write some music and record some music and like sort of, I guess I almost, this is kind of a long winded answer to this, but I always no, had, I always had, I like, I, I always had FOMO in New York too. Like there was no, there was no way I could stay in and like read a book on a Friday night until <laughs> COVID hit. And then I was kind of like, okay, let me slow down. Like I was able to practice again too, once that happened and like, um, that that's sort of when I started putting out music. So then I put out a, an album of like piano stuff that was inspired by New York um, called city in the sky. And then uh, I briefly, I ended up moving to London briefly um, uh, during COVID. Uh, Cause I was dating someone. This is unrelated to, uh, I don't know why I mentioned that at all. <laughs> anyway, <No, man. laughs> but like I was out there for six months um, and like, uh, the whole time I was in New York, I was teaching and stuff too. So I was just like, I, I'm really grateful that I went there, uh, I guess, first out of college because it like, I learned, I don't know, just it like the energy was so gave me so much. And it, it was it was always a dream city for me, like growing up in North Carolina and stuff. I would love like jazz history. So I'd be reading about all these places. And then like, um. I used to do this thing. It's kind of weird where I would like, I would listen to someone's music and walk sometimes like five miles to where they lived. So I'd walk to like miles Brownstone on set West 77th or like mm. the Lonious monks house on 63rd street and, or like Charlie Parker spot in the East village. And like would only listen to their music, just meditating sort of, and would walk there for like three miles or however far. And then would just be kind of like living in this world and just like, it was it se probably seemed kind of weird like you would have just seen me like outside the house like with headphones on like but um but that's like, crazy that's a book that's, like, that, that, that's the city is so in in inspiring to me um yeah. but um but yeah then so then I moved to LA um 
in on uh, in 2021 uh like uh basically right as like the vaccine was coming out um and then since i've been out here I, i've just been uh uh like yeah sort of getting into more more production stuff and and still trying to keep like the still trying to keep the root of what I like the people that I grew up listening to and my teachers at Oberlin so that I can sort of stay grounded. Um, mm. But like just trying to find ways to you know, use the piano to like amplify the artist voices that I'm working with. And like, um, cause when I was in Ohio too, me and Mike played at this Nigerian church, um, which was like a really profound influence for how I saw music. Um, and because like um i would i would have to play while the pastor was speaking um and like just find like uh moods that would like affirm what she was saying um and so like that like now when i play with an artist too i'm just trying to find chords and like sounds that will like affirm you know what they're what they're trying to say and so that's sort of how i see production too is just like Mm. complimenting um something and so i just try to like out here um just stay tapped into the root of the people that i that are my inspirations so that i don't like get lost in this superficial aspects of the music industry and la in general um but um this is like a super long-winded answer um but yeah i think like I don't know. I think like also just coming out of college, there were so many things that I didn't learn that I learned in New York. Like there was, mm. um, which like, cause also if you think about like a conservatory, the name is like, it's, it's conserving something. And I feel like Oberlin is a very progressive conservatory, but it's still not really, it's not a progressatory or whatever. It's not like you know what I mean. That that's not that's not kind of silly. No, but like, no, I, I it's exactly. conserving a, a tradition, and so it's there's a lot of things I feel like you learn, and being in New York is different because you can go out and see what people are doing. But like when I was there, I I at Oberlin, I didn't see what any musicians were doing, or like to you know, you see a little bit in Cleveland, but um, I guess there was a lot of lessons for me in in New York about just um you know just different ways of music business and like just I guess different ways of yeah different ways of making making things work um but yeah beautiful man no I think when you say it man I also think about like how sometimes our journey is given to us you know through you know, people that we meet and, you know, and collaborations that we do, you know, um, you know, throughout, throughout the time we're out here, you know, and like, I do think that like, I think a part of it is finding it and searching for it and working on your craft. But then from even hearing what you're saying, and maybe you could even elaborate to this, it's like, sometimes, you know, your path is sort of like, naturally mapped out for you you know, naturally by the people that you're surrounded by, the people that you meet, the school that you went to, or just the people that you network in, you know, in life. Um, and it seems that like um, you just took the opportunities and created the most out of them, um, which is like the goal, you know what I mean? And it's, and, and that, and what I'm getting to is sh should there be such like such anxiety about like, where am I, where am I going to end up and, or like, you know, as people coming out of college, you know, like, Oh, wh what am I going to end up doing? Like, you know, in a 10 years time compared to just, you know, following through and just, you know, take making the most. Yeah. Well, I think for me, at least as like a improvising a musician or something, like, I guess I didn't really have like as clear of a plan as some people might've, so like I guess some people work will work better with like uh like I don't know like some people that are very detail oriented they need to have like these like benchmarks and check marks um but like I don't know like when I was in New York I was kind of just uh following I guess the energy or like 
I was like, okay, it feels good playing with these people. Like, let's see what happens now. And, uh, and also like just trying to keep as many possibilities open and like always approach music from like a limitless possibility of collaboration versus like a competitive mindset and, mm. and like just kind of, uh, um, yeah, I think like it, but it, it, it definitely works better for some people to have like concrete things of like, okay, after two years, I want to put out this album. I think a lot of times, like my approach was kind of like throwing paint on a canvas and then see what sticks and then like, oh, follow this, like, okay, people liked this, this, you know, versus, um, you know, how some people will be way more intentional. Um, and I think I'm, I'm still working on, on, on that, but, um, I don't, yeah, I, I guess I just tried to keep, I always try to keep like, also try to preserve like the joy aspect of it because it's like, I feel like I want to just, I want to love playing piano more and then hopefully other people will love listening to the music more versus like trying to get better than someone else from a technical standpoint. But then if I sound like I don't even love it, like I feel like the person that's better is the person that has more joy doing it. So even if it's something simple, people react to the joy. So like, mm -hmm just trying to find ways to cultivate like keep the joy at the at the forefront and like keep the competitive shit as far to the back um because also like music is like yeah it's competitive in that there's whatever certain slots at a festival or something but it's like endlessly collaborative like it's literally you could work with anyone you could work with an oboe player and a tap dancer if you want like no one it's 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 limitless and also people can always be fans of a new artist it's not like someone's like oh i can only listen to like five artists it's like there's always room for people it's on for billions of people there's eight billion people to to you know appreciate something so i just yeah. try to keep those like limitless possibilities feeling at the forefront versus like the sort of like sometimes it's a jazz school mindset too of like okay like i want to do something that'll be that would like be more impressive it's like no i just want to do something simple that would resonate with someone it's all i yeah. want to i'm just i need to see connection not like uh, you know impressiveness or like science museum like oh look at what i could do you'd never be able to do this i'd rather just be no, let me play two chords and I hope you feel this because that's why I do music. It's yeah. it's not a fucking wizard show, you know? It's like, Absolutely. and all of my mentors, like Sullivan, this guy, Yusef Salim, like they communicated so much through sometimes like, it was like, it's understated and they're, they're, they're so humble. So it's not like, a, it was never this flashy bombard uh bombastic thing you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. like it's it's and it's also i feel like with sullivan especially is like just the idea of this like endless pursuit of something that you never because the, the funny thing that, that i realized at oberlin was sullivan was my teacher right but i realized at the time he's actually the best student here <laughs> it's like it was crazy like he's the teacher but he's a better student than any any of the other students yeah and he's already a professional musician with a incredibly successful career but like his approach was like the best like it's this endless student mindset that you could always grow always be open to new things everything is loose you know so i think that you know um studying with him like yeah just trying to see it as like there's not really an end goal it's like it's just a love of the music and that's why like i'll be so inspired by miles and and coltrane too because like miles i'm pretty sure never even listened to his albums like he didn't even own kind of blue he just mm. got back in the studio with another group of like killing young musicians and then made a new album that was like improvised it just kept defining shit on the search but it's like yeah. he was never like bumping his own music like yo like you know he was never like he was never celebrating his previous successes he was on a quest so like 
that's and in like pop music there's a lot of people that aren't on that they're like in the shit for the wrong reasons you know superficial things so i just try to like stay rooted in like what the joy and like the quest aspect as as much as i can bro i mean i think that's like i think that's the difference between you know musicians that are like more focused on musicality compared to just like you know um just riddling off information they know because musicality tells you something different you know obviously like when it comes to musicality the music you know the music tells you what's you know what's best in that particular moment and you know you just following that intuition or that approach to the music is completely different from someone that approaches it in a way that oh I'm going to just show what I can do because I think like at that point you're regurgitating compared to actually allowing for the music to put you in different contexts or different different scenarios for you to be able to create something new like I feel like that's the only time when you know something is actually coming out of yeah you know how like you know uh you can create uh like obviously we both we use this in our composition process or improvisation process you can create or input like you know uh an idea in, out there but then you also have ideas that come up, come to you through external factors, right? Like, so say for instance, you're walking around and you saw something on yeah. the wind and it's like, oh shoot, like that just reminded me, like I should do, I should do this. And in the yeah. same way in the musical setting, there might be something that the singer does, might be something that the drummer does that then mm -hmm. ignites you and, and sparks a, an idea in your mind to do something else or to take you a different direction musically. And yeah. that's where the ma magic happens and exactly. honestly, I think like that's the process that all the greats go through and they, yeah. they utilize that every time to its maximum. And yeah. that and that like that right there is is what constitutes to um constantly playing at your highest sort of capacity mm -hmm. and you know, through time or like through repetition by just doing your thing by just playing all the time, you're naturally gonna get better because you're not yeah. gonna be you're not going to be encountering similar problems. You're going to be encountering, you know, different, different situations. Yeah. You know? And I definitely, and I, I feel like that mindset too also helps to take some of the ego out of it because it's not like, even if you, you play something, it's not like, Oh, look at what I did. It's like, Oh, you went on a walk and you saw this bird on something. And then when you're playing, it's just, it's just a witness of what, happened so it's not mm -hmm. it's just like it's not even there's not even credit it's just it's just a translation of events so then yes. um or or like the translation of the other musicians you're playing with and like you know playing off of what it's just it's a conversation so it's like it mm -hmm. can help you know make it from a more universal place less with less ego yeah and that's the thing, man. Like, I, I think, yeah, I think that allows for there to be true um, union. Like, when everybody's open that way and when everybody's thinking like that, everybody basically has the same sort of mindset or same goal mm -hmm. in mind. So if everyone on the bandstand has the same goal in mind, there's naturally going to be that that connection. And it's going to, it's gonna, you know, like you talk about Miles, you talk about, like, those bands clearly had that, you know. Um, yeah. So sometimes... I, I I think within these uh, couple of uh, conversations I ha I've had um, with um, people like just recently, I've been coming back to the conclusion of how like, you know, um, sometimes it's not necessarily something you're, sometimes it's not necessarily something you're not shedding or something you uh, practically or like, you know, like technically being proficient mm -hmm. or it's not because you haven't learned enough it's not because that's not what's hindering you sometimes it's your mindset yeah. that's hindering you you know yeah well i also think like because it's like yeah like you know as people that have already been out of conservatories it's like yes we we need to keep working on technique to but like also the technique is is cool not like we we we, we need to focus on like the connection and the translation 
where like it's still good to keep working on technique because it can get us it can help with communication and like mm -hmm. but like i think a lot of people get practice too much uh they practice to stay busy but don't practice like um connection or i don't know but no man i think, I think that's our that's it, it, it then then becomes a tool like you know to be able to like you know spread you know uh spread like sort of that human kind of interaction like mm -hmm. just like how we do with everything else you know um otherwise it just becomes something that is not as powerful of a uh tool as it truly can be like its potential is is great you know mm -hmm. and so um it, it's, it's great to talk about this to like kind of raise awareness of like other other conversations we need to have around music you know um and mm -hmm. It's interesting because I, I, for myself, I, I do want to, it's an interesting topic to have because you have the jazz where it's acoustic and then you also have like where we're in 2023 where, you know, mm -hmm. it's been a lot of advancements, you know, in terms of like uh, tools that we have or, you know, um, instruments that we have today mm -hmm. that, you know, that we hear on the pop radios that sometimes you look at, you know, maybe sometimes your average listener you know, or your average pop listener nowadays is accustomed to a certain sort of like thing uh, sonically and yeah. how in, ja in the jazz world, sometimes it takes, it might take like a little different sort of uh, taste buds or maybe getting accustomed to, to be able to like, like how can we really bridge those gaps? Obviously you have people that are creating the fusion, right? And, um, yeah. but I, I, I'm curious to hear from your perspective, being someone that's in the middle of these two worlds and, yeah. you know, what do you well, think? I think like, um, well, the drummer that I play with a lot of times, uh, Yusef, he, he, he kind of encourages me to like always be looking for like new sounds and stuff. And kind of, he's like, he's just like, man, like the Nord is like dead, like this piano <laughs> shit, like, just take what you already know and then translate it to new sounds. And, mm. and like, so sometimes it, it's almost as simple as that of it's literally, it's just taking what we, what I would have already played on piano, but then having like two patches that could make it feel fresh or, or, or different. Um, but I think also like, there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, pushing, pushing the music forward. Um, and like it's not just it's not just about sounds but like it's weird because i feel like jazz has has like simultaneously never been less popular but then also never been more popular in some ways of like like kendrick lamar's to pimp a butterfly has so many elements of like live music there's even one like swing song with like glasper and that's like that's you know, he's one of the biggest artists in the world, but then right. at the same time, like there's not a lot of, there's no one playing standards right now. That's on the level that like, even like, I don't know, like people used to be in that way. So, or, or there's some aspects of jazz where it's like, okay, it seems like it's dying out. We have the old jazz is dead uh, thing. But I think, so it's like, it's in an interesting place and it's just kind of like migrating into new worlds. And, but there's also like uh, Samara, uh, like she's one yeah. of the best artists, exactly. Uh, stuff like that. And like, you know, a lot of people where it's like, uh, and, and yeah, she's singing like a mix of originals and standards too, which is so dope to see. It's like, um, we that so, so it's, it's still, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's still right there. The people, and also I think sometimes with this age of like digital shit, social media, TikTok, it's like something as real as what she's doing just cuts through immediately people can like people as there becomes more ai and more like whack fake stuff the real stuff the real gems are only going to shine brighter i think mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like and that like but but yeah i mean it's an interesting i think a lot of the issues with jazz have are, are coming from it being so institutionalized and now the teachers it's easier to teach a, a class to a group of like 20 people like a science and so 
a lot of people have almost made jazz into this like chess like thing mm. where it's like oh you can use these formulas that apply because it's such an advanced music that there can be formulas made to it but it's like that's so far from the root of where it started and it's been really whitewashed and like institutionalized so that it's like it's so far from its root that I think that's why people's perception of jazz is like different sometimes. Um, mm, yeah, and I'm saying yeah. that as a white guy that went to school for jazz. So <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm yeah. just like, but no, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's yeah. I think when you, when, when we put it in those kind of like lens, it's like, I, I can see, I can see where, you know, there can be like that level of disconnect because you know, there's not that level of uh, connection to the culture as much, you know, in terms yeah. of, like, you know, the actual, I feel like New York was the best teacher. And I think that's honestly why New York is probably one of, you know, the best places, you know, even though there are great, you know, institutions like Obo, um, you know, to, you know, get a degree because you can also get that other side of the thing as well. Yeah. And sometimes you can't really replace that, right? And no. And it seems to me, that I I do believe that there's that there's you know acoustic great jazz you know that come in in, in the future as yeah. well. But I, I I honestly do think that like uh the like the idea of like finding and tapping into into new possibilities sonically too will probably come to come they'll, they'll probably come into play at some point because yeah I do think that like um I had a conversation with Eric Lewis you know, where we kind of had a similar thing. And he was saying how, like, you know, when people, like, what well, people are, like, the actual tech, like, the actual tech that these uh, people are using for their shows or their records, like, you know, I mean, they're really, like, pushing the limits, right? And they're, yeah. and they're literally, like, in terms of when you listen, when you listen to that compared to anything else, like, there's, there's a, there's a clear difference in, in terms of, like, uh, you like to call it a, he was saying like how it can be a, a like an over delivery kind of thing, uh -huh. like a, like an over delivery kind of a, a thing where it's just like it's so much where that kind of constitutes itself to what the best sounds like when that's not really true, you yeah. know. And so it's like I do think that like being able to actually like harness that in a way that works for a traditional yeah. kind of like jazz setting would probably be like the future because like, you know, just like anything, like, you know, people were using recording materials back in the day that were best to use, but now we have different equipment that, yeah. you know, is more suited for what we use. And, you know, yeah. so I think we, we just naturally, that's, that's going to be some level of integration. You know? Yeah. And I think there's also a lot of room for like still using the acoustic format, but then, affecting and amplifying those instruments like mm, instead mm. of just using synths like running an acoustic piano through pedals or running a trumpet through effects and that's why i think like in a lot of ways like the the first black radio album was kind of like uh like a new possibility or like because it, it's like it is these acoustic instruments but everything sounds so like new and like uh i've never heard a, an album that was produced like that before but it's still the traditional format in terms of like piano bass yeah. drums trio like sax vocals but that's just one example but um but yeah no nah, man that's that's definitely exciting you know to kind of like think about and like i think if anything man like you know you being an ob, OB you know exactly you might have gotten this like the 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 Billy Hart like sort of uh uh conversation about where music is headed. Like have you ever uh -huh. you heard that uh, one? Uh maybe. Uh I don't I don't know exactly if I heard him or but I, you, I you heard definitely have you've have, you've bumped into him where he's talking about some stuff at some point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I've 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 been in his office a bunch of times like with Mike and listening, but Yeah, same here. So I would just be listening and he would just be like talking about stuff and you know. But if anything, like he would be talking about like the future of the music and like, or I remember, I don't want to quote him because I, I, I would prefer for him to, you know, be here, you know, really yeah, get yeah. into it. But like, I do think that like, 
there's something fascinating to like you know like sometimes you find it there like decades like sometimes it's like usually span of a decade where like the mm -hmm. sound is kind of like being like uh like there's a shift like in terms right. of like what you know like and we see it all the time and and but i do think that like when the shifts happen they're not so like they're not so removed from the shift or uh, uh previously previous to mm -hmm. it you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah. sometimes we can literally like think about where we're at now and where it's headed and yeah. um and i think that only will only strengthen like where we end up you know mm -hmm. yeah definitely i think like yeah it's a it's an evolution and a lot of times it it goes back it like will cycle back kind of like mm. like it feels like a lot of ways like 70s 80s fusion stuff is kind of like maybe re-emerging now or or like it's like a weird like cycle or sometimes <laughs> where like it's like on a 40 year thing where like or even like yeah i don't know or like in the uk scene there's a lot of stuff that's like 90s sounding drum and bass mixed in with the jazz it's like you never know what sort of sub genres will like re-emerge Re yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, it's it's mm, that's a great it's a great it's a great uh place to take this conversation because i honestly would actually come in to be like i i honestly think that like we don't it can be either or like yeah like i do think that like a lot of it is just depending on momentum of like what's like you know what's like what's the popular song of the day? I mean, this is just an example. This is not exactly how it could be, you know, uh, uh, connected to how something then, you know, builds builds up, you know, uh, or reappear. But I do think that like sometimes it's just about like what's 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 musically popping and like what 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 like what are tasting, you know, what are kind of like impacting people or like who's like. Who puts out something that you know naturally like how we have on social media nowadays that goes viral right like mm -hmm. you know what i mean like the, the 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 what constitutes to what becomes the next thing is really like uh it's really i don't want to say random but like it's it is no it's like, like it has a lot of it has a lot of like uh it is it is more random i think than ever yeah. before because of social media in some ways like it's the traditional role of the label is not the same where like now even when people sign the labels they're like they're especially like pop or you know stuff they're they're telling people to just post on tiktok but then it's like well then why do you even need the label you could just be independent post on tiktok and then own all your music and like so it's like but then it's also so random like even like I had a show in, in or a residency in Black Cat in, in San Francisco. Uh, I was just there. Two <laughs> weeks. Yeah. I love that spot. But it was like, it was weird because I was like, okay, the guy was telling me, he's like, yeah, we've still got some tickets um, that, that can be sold tonight or whatever. And I was like, all right, like, I guess I'll like post about it. And then it's like, but how did it get to this point where like, I'm just relying on an algorithm. And then like, if the post, if I did a post, like, on the top of some skyscraper in San Francisco or something like more people might actually come to the show yeah. <laughs> if I just posted like a photo of like a piano there and it's like how am, how did it get to this point where like this is like the main way to reach people now where like traditionally there would have been you know it's like oh I mean it's still it, the underground thing is still there and like people you know but it's just weird to that like we would have to like yeah or like even like you're you're putting a song out, then if you do like if the if the video looks better, the song might more people might hear. Actually, yeah, they might actually. And it's like what, this is just it's just, it, it definitely feels random a little bit, but and then it's like that same thing about like what you're saying about like things being real or fake, you know, and like how like if something looks so good, like that can kind of mask as yeah. like the music quality being just as exactly. good. Like, well, like yeah. visually. You know? But then it, yeah, and then it's like a mixed thing because then if it doesn't look good, then it might be more real, but not reach as many people. So it's like you want to have something, you want to have both, kind of. But you need it, to have both if you want that integrity, like yeah, you know, in a way. It's, it's, but, it's, yeah, 
But then there's some people that, you know, have so many videos out, but they don't have any music out. So it's like they reeled in all these people, but then there's no end goal or they're not playing shows. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, I feel like it's all about translation with with that stuff where it's like the fans, the social media to me is all an illusion until it becomes real, until one person that saw a video comes to the show then it's actually a good thing other than that it literally doesn't fill me with any feeling of anything that can compare to like a handshake or a hug it's all it's all an illusion until oh someone actually is listening to your song while they're driving somewhere or like the next time you go to paris they come to the show and then it's like okay this is a positive thing that happens on this platform but without that it's like just seeing a number doesn't it's doesn't feel doesn't feel like anything it's not real so i don't know but yeah it's crazy that. man i i i mean there's a lot of bots out there too but i honestly yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. but, no but like no no but i feel like you know people like yourself like you know there are a lot of people that like you know do it like the 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 what is it the the uh the easy route but like you know working actually you know and being consistent and building your fans through actual like having a real listening like yeah. fan base is possible too and which is what you do and obviously yeah when you make a post because there are people that actually have engaged with your you know content then actually if they're in town they're naturally going to want to come and check it out and i and i think that's that's a great way to look at it in terms of like like i think we, we as artists like not being so like uh, attached to social media is only healthy for us, you know, yeah. but to really look at it as something that can be a tool, you know, to kind of bring people together. Cause that's yeah, obviously where we want to be at. That's the goal. That's the end goal. You know? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just community bringing people together, but yeah. Staying yeah. away from the toxic parts of it. Cause in yeah. general, I think it's a platform that makes like the world a worse place and makes like, millions of people sad that yeah but there is a slight redeeming thing that's like okay maybe you could discover something and then go to a show or like find something but like yeah or what would you say in terms of oh my bad oh no no i was i was done oh okay okay. (laughs) what would you say like uh in terms of like uh now you know being at this point and you know if you if you were to have like advice for like building that social media presence because like a lot of in the shed and like what we're doing is Mm -hmm. also like artist development too and like we're trying to like um help people kind of like build the brand and like you know push their things through their content and kind of like just building a track record and yeah but like in terms of like there's that side of it as well and then there's like the business side of it you know in terms of like if you want to put out a record like how do we do that like mm-hmm. and like what would you say you know i guess things that you you know that you think would be great for people to know to really like kind of like set themselves up yeah i would say i mean the one thing is i i i try not to take it too deeply like i don't respect instagram as a platform enough to have everything i put on there be perfect so i try kind of mm-hmm. treat it almost as a journal where like it's being consistent is very helpful so like for basically for a while i would just i would maybe have an idea of just something just that i just improvise just film a video and then just post it and not think too much about it you can always archive stuff later if that's the, that's also how i feel about releasing music kind of which this isn't maybe the best approach but like it's like if you put something out that people don't like no one cares like no one is like oh man did you hear this song it was so bad it's literally they just move on or if you put something out that they do like they they save it and remember it but it's like like if you put out a hundred videos and like people are gonna like parts of it and if they don't like something then like no one no one remembers it and then you can just archive it later um but i think like I don't know. I I think um, consistency definitely helps. uh, And and people like to just see like, you know, what you're doing with with within the shed, like behind the scenes kind of stuff like, oh, I'm shedding this 
this idea today. And then, you know, it doesn't have to be a finished high budget thing. It's like, then they, they see that it's more real than like, you know, you playing on the top of the empire state building or something that like <laughs> which would also be dope, but like, it doesn't have to be like, uh, it's, it can be cool if it's just a, a snippet of like your writing process, which is, which is a lot of the stuff I posted was just kind of like, I just be practicing. And I was like, Oh, this sounds cool. Like let me put the phone on 30 seconds. I don't want to overthink it. I don't want to take too long. And, uh, but the other thing that's funny is sometimes people would like see my IG and be like, Oh, this guy is like spending all his time, like playing piano by himself. And it's like, actually like I filmed like 15 of these videos in one day and then have been in the studio with all these people. I'm just not posting that. So <laughs> like, it's like, uh, but like you can do like, I mean, cause I, I just don't, I don't, the platform's not that deep for me to treat it with a deep respect. Or deep, yeah. Yeah. It's a fucking etch a sketch thing that could get deleted at any moment. So like, I, I would just like do like a bunch of videos and then just, post it like it's like i'm wearing the same outfit in like 10 videos because i all did it in one day and like one day yeah, yeah people fuck with it great if if they don't like it's there's no like yeah maybe some there's some people that think my ig is corny it's like i don't give a i really couldn't care less about that like <laughs> i mean so i just i i just I, I would say like don't respect the platform that sounds kind of like bad advice but like it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be thought out. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always archive stuff later. But I think just putting stuff out consistently, then people, it's just more like lines that people could reach on. And then some of those people might, will find the album or will see the show. And then like, um, yeah, but just to try to not get like, I think it's just also like seeing it as it's an illusion and a tool. So like, if I get unfollowed by a hundred people a day, I don't really care. Like, but it's cool that it's a tool that would allow, like, I, I don't want to get too caught up in, or sometimes I'll post something that I think would be awesome. And like, it'll get like no likes. And then I'll post something that I think is stupid. And like a million people. Yeah. Get, and it's like, that's, that's okay. Crazy about it's it. just fucking <laughs> random. Like we can't, there's no sense to it. It's just a uh, computer algorithm shit. So there's no point in trying to make it make sense. I think just like if you like for people that want to grow a following, just be consistent, show people a true version of you. And then don't like don't don't overthink it or 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 trip about it too much. But then also don't get I would say don't get too lost in. Have like an end. Don't have Instagram be the final place. So it's like if you're writing a song, then you know, maybe you post a little snippet of it, but still have the song be written or have the song come out. So then it's like in the process where like you wouldn't want to just have like hundreds of videos, but then people can't, they're like, cause then if people, if there's a video that like goes viral or whatever, and then people can click to the song, then you actually make money from it and stuff where otherwise if you have a video that goes viral and you don't have any music out, then it's like, okay well what's the, point? Yeah. what's the point like i mean you yeah. th you have fans that then when you do put music out they might still be there but like it's better to not have it be your end goal but just have it be like a portal for people to see i, I think absolutely i i have a similar thing where like with the creative processes thing that i that i was doing where i just write stuff like i basically would finish them up and like now like i'm basically like gearing up some of them to be like you know come out this year or next year sometime i think probably end of this year but yeah okay. man like that that's 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 great advice because we can't let we can't like be making content just for the gram like the content needs yeah. to be just content you know that's going to serve our artistry and yeah. um and yeah and then like we can like that's what i was saying diversifying on all the platforms too is just like just raising or just putting out so much more volume that like we raise our our chances of you know of somebody you know connecting with what we're putting out there you know definitely yeah for sure but but yeah man i'm hyped to hear hyped to hear the the project and so happy to see, bro. see you man, that, playing man. playing all these stages and stuff and uh 
that I, this is unrelated, but this A and R at Blue Note was like asking me like for trumpet players, and you're like the first name I gave him for. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if he's if he might reach out soon. But oh, my friend, really? My friend wow. Alex. Yeah. Um, Alfred, what is his name? A- Alex Anastasi. He, he oh, okay, okay. No, but he's like he was saying they need like new trumpet people. So I just I don't know, man. But because obviously, so happy to see you like killing it out here since since Oberlin so and also with this platform in the shed is super dope inspiring oh bro thank you man that's great to hear bro I'm actually shopping the labels right now <laughs> okay so, yeah <laughs> so that's funny that you it's all coming together yeah. and you know um I can connect you with him on text too if, if perfect you want. yeah let's do that man yeah that'd okay. be great perfect um Man, yeah, same here, bro. Congrats on all of the success, bro. I saw you did the thing with uh Universal. Oh yeah, right? thanks. Bro. Yeah, 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 and I'll... that's beautiful. Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like 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 a lot of like all the music you've composed, and they kind of basically go in like what would that process be? Um. Well, it's 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 for publishing. So basically, like they're gonna set me up with sessions with different artists and stuff, and then they collect. Yeah my my publishing so it's different than like the master royalties so i can still because i'm still an independent artist so i can put out i can drop an album tomorrow and it, it doesn't affect that it's more for like radio play and um like movies and tvs and stuff but basically like yeah so i have i have a deal where i'll still get all my rights back i have a full reversion so it's like they're taking a percentage for the next couple of years and then they're incentivized to put me in sessions with artists. And then like, if the song that they sort of connected comes out, then, you know, th- they take like the, their percentage, which is like 25%. Um, yeah. It seemed like a good, uh, good That's opportunity. Amazing, amazing but, deal, bro. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm man. excited. Though. Yeah. Just, Cause at that, okay. at that point you could also have, you have the freedom to opt yeah. out at any time you like but then you also get to also like maximize on the opportunities man it's great yeah i can always turn down sessions it's not like i have to do stuff but yeah. but then it, they're also like they're there to have a team that could if i went to another place they would know artists in france and could set me up and then yeah you know, so but yeah it's i just signed two days ago so just excited to see kind of what happens Let's with go, it. man we out here bro <laughs> yes sir Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. It's good to catch up with you, man. This yeah, man. Hope, hope, to, hope to play soon. Bro, we will. We will. Because yeah. I'm trying to get up to LA actually pretty soon, man. I gotta like I gotta like hit up some people. I gotta, you know. So I'm I'm you're in you where are you based around there? Are you in uh I'm in Highland Park, East East LA. Okay. Um, I live with two other musicians. Um so Dope, man. it's a good spot. We got we got studios here and, and stuff. No man. Well, yeah, bro. When I, I when I'm when I'm out there, I'm gonna try to figure out if y'all like playing sessions or anything like that. Or, oh yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, come man. definitely yeah. shout, man. That'd be sweet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, man, I appreciate you taking the time and have, having me on on here. Man, I'm, thank you, bro. This has been amazing, bro. And I'll be in touch with you because, like, we I should send you a Discord link. I because okay. you know people would love to like you know you know kind of talk to you in there i'm sure people that know what you do we have like a producer's chat and everything and like piano yeah. chat <laughs> oh, man. yeah, yeah. sick so I'm, 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 I'm gonna be in touch bro amazing bro well great to it's great to catch up have always a man. Day, bro talk soon bro you too yes sir all right take care man yeah yeah